What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the second part of a story where Izuku married with RWBY girls. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations, and support the amazing author devdog756 for writing this story. Now, let's get into part 2. The evening came around as Izuku, Yang, Ruby and Iri were sitting around a campfire while roasting marshmallows which Iri enjoyed eating, albeit she was a bit messy while eating them. MMMMMM, these mellows are yummy. Iri said while smiling as Yang grabbed a napkin and cleaned Iri's face. You gotta be careful eating these Iri, you'll get messy, and marshmallows can get sticky once roasted. Yang said as both Izuku and Ruby started chuckling. Speaking from experiences. Ruby asked while laughing along with Izuku which made Yang embarrassed and Yuri giggle. Shut up Ruby. Yang shouted in embarrassment as Izuku and Ruby kept on laughing, while Liri was confused to what was going on, but she kept enjoying her marshmallows. Yang, you were so messy when eating marshmallows to the point mom made sure to pack extra napkins so she could clean your face. Ruby said as Izuku just smiled and ate a marshmallow before continuing laughing. You weren't any better Ruby. Yang snapped back at Ruby as Izuku calmed Yang down with a kiss which worked very well as Yang calmed down. Now now, let's not get fired up over childhood habits Yang. Izuku said to Yang which made her giggle a bit as Iri looked up at her mama and papa. Hey papa, what did you, mama, auntie Ruby and uncle John, used to do when you were younger? Iri asked as Ruby picked her up and sat her on her lap. Oh, we used to go on lots of crazy and fun adventures when we were younger Iri, and they were really fun. Ruby said as Eerie had starts in her eyes while Ruby handed Eerie to Yang. Yeah, your papa usually led our adventures, and every time I was in trouble, he always swooped in and saved me like a knight in shining armor. Yang said as Eerie was in awe as Izuku playfully hit Yang's shoulder. You left out the part where most of those times were because you got in over your head, Yang. You see Snowball, your mama was and is still a bit of a hothead. Izuku said as Yang held her head down, while Eerie giggled. But you have to make me look silly in front of our daughter, Izuku. Yang asked as Izuku just chuckled and kissed Yang on the cheek, subconsciously making Ruby feel awkward. Don't worry, I still love you mama, faults and all. Iri said while smiling as Yang just smiled back at her daughter, before she gave her a big hug. You're so pure and kind Iri. No matter what people say, being kind is not even close to being weak, never forget that sweetie. Yang said as Iri nodded her head, leading to Yang give Iri head pats. The night continued on as Eerie heard stories about Izuku, Yang and Ruby when they were younger which absolutely captured Eerie's attention, leading to the little snowball listening to every word she heard, despite not really understanding everything, but she kept on listening until they all ended up turning in for the night and went to bed. The next day. Weiss and Blake were in the middle of looking over their notes, while Kaminari tried to hit on Weiss and flirt with her, only to fail miserably, as he slumped towards Mineta and Siro. I don't get it, how could that not have worked? Kaminari complained as he floped his head against the table the three were sitting at. Told you you should have tried your luck with the cat girl. Siro said as Kaminari rolled his eyes. And that was your game too. Ice Queen has got no taste. Mineta said as they then heard slurping, turning to see Shoto eating some soba. If that's your game, that's pretty pathetic. Shoto said as he finished eating his soba, as the three looked offended at Shoto. The hell do you know about women, pretty boy Mineta asked, fuming at Shoto as he wasn't phased by the grapes outburst. More than you three idiots combined. Shoto said, very bluntly and to the point as the three all shot up and fell on their asses, making some of their classmates giggle. We knows lots about women, we just keep getting shitty luck. Kaminari yelled as Shoto just looked at them, extremely deadpan as he shook his head. No, you're all just idiots. Shoto said as he walked away, leaving the three perverts fuming at the dual-haired boy's observation. It's not fair, how the hell can he get a babe, especially one like her when we can't, Kaminari blurted out as he pointed at John, who was cuddling with Pura on the couch as Kaminari was staring daggers at him. Well for starters, John doesn't make uncomfortable remarks about her looks, and doesn't have a power that makes him a massive moron. Ren said, freaking Mineta and Kaminari out as they fell on their asses, again. Now, I'm not someone who judges people off of other people's experiences, but judging off what I've heard about you two from Izuku, I'm considering making an exception. Ren said, as Kaminari and Mineta both looked offended at what he said. We haven't done anything like that. Kaminari and Mineta both said at the same time, leaving Ren completely unconvinced with that they said. So, you both tricking the girls into wearing cheerleader outfits just for your own amusement doesn't count. Ren asked, leaving the two perverts speechless. Well, they listened to us, so it's their fault for being gullible bimbos. Mineta admitted, leaving Ren just looking at him with discontent and confusion, while Siro had a WTF look on his face. 
Izuku told me the only reason the girls even believed you two was because you said that it was an order from Izawa, even though they should have realized he wouldn't even bother to think of anything to help you during the sports festival. Ren said, as the two couldn't think of anything to say. Not to mention you've been trying to hit on Weiss, despite her not even remotely showing any interest in you Kaminari. And you Mineta, I saw all those looks you gave Nora. Ren said, glaring at Mineta while keeping his distance for the grape under control. Heh, well with eyes like those, I can't help myself. Besides, she's wasting her time with such a bore like you. Mineta said as Ren would have snapped at the grape, but he didn't as Mineta felt a feeling of dread as he looked behind him and saw a very angry Nora. Nora then kicked Mineta in the face, sending him flying into a wall, as she and Ren went to sit down together, leaving Mineta in a daze. A while later, Izuku, Yang, Ruby, Eri and his parents returned as they got out of the car, as Yang was carrying Eri, as she and Izuku noticed a little scene happening around Bumblebee, as Yang noticed a girl with pink hair, as well as Blake, Weiss, John, Achako and Momo. Izuku, who's that chick with the pink hair looking at my bike? Yang asked as Izuku immediately knew what was going on, and started panicking. That's Mei Hatsum from the support course babe. Izuku said as Yang's interest was piqued. An inventor huh? What are the odds? Yang said as she started walking towards the little scene, but Izuku got in the way. Bad idea Yang, most of the things Hatsum touches normally don't work properly. And by that, I mean as it they blow up most the time. Izuku explained to Yang, before she handed Eri to him as she kept walking. Yang got closer as she could hear Blake begging with Mei to stop touching Bumblebee, telling her it was for her own good as the Faunus girl then noticed Yang as she immediately panicked, as Yang cleared her throat. Getting a good look there, dreads. Yang asked as Mei jumped out of fear as she turned around and looked scared. Oh, this can't end well. Achako whispered to Momo as she nodded. Based off what I've heard from Blake, Xiao Long's overprotective of her bike. Very overprotective. Momo whispered back to Achako as they were waiting for the moment where Yang snaps. Uh, well I uh, please don't kill me, I swear I was just looking. Mei started pleading to Yang, worried she was going to get pissed, given Yang's appearance and what Blake said about Yang. Ruby also was worried about Yang's reaction as she covered Yuri's eyes and ears, not wanting her to hear or see what might be about to happen, while Izuku braced himself. Izuku mentioned you're an inventor, think you can give Bumblebee some baddest bells and whistles. Yang asked, leaving everyone in complete shock and disbelief. We're not talking about the Transformer, right? Mei asked, as Yang nodded her while pointing at her bike, as Mei got excited. You got a Goldilocks, I'll give your bike awesome upgrades, and I 1000% promise you it won't blow up. Mei said with lots of excitement in her voice as she started thinking, while the others looked at her, extremely confused. What? Yang asked as she noticed the confused looks of Izuku, Ruby and their friends. Yang, you normally never let any touch your bike, so what made you change your mind now? Ruby asked her sister as she uncovered Yuri's eyes and ears, leaving the snowball confused to what just happened, but didn't think too much about it, as Ruby handed Yuri a cookie. Hey, free upgrades are free upgrades Rubes. Plus, she promised she wouldn't blow it up. Yang said as Izuku just shrugged his shoulders as he grabbed the case holding Holy Requien inside, as they heard Kaminari's voice. What's the big deal, it's just a stupid motorcycle. Which girls shouldn't even be driving in the first place. Kaminari said as Izuku, Ruby and Blake all knew Kaminari just made the biggest mistake of his life, as Yang walked up to him, before punching him so hard, he went flying as he landed at the other side of the dorm. And he wonders why he can't get a girl to like him. Izuku said which got a laugh from everyone as they headed inside and sat down. But of course, Izuku couldn't catch a break as Iida came storming into the common area, extremely pissy as he was holding another briefcase. Yagi, what the hell is this? Iida yelled as he opened the case, showing Izuku's sword inside. How the hell did you find that? You four-eyed prick, you went into my room and snooped my stuff. The hell is wrong with you Iida Izuku snapped at Iida as everyone else gathered around and were in awe of seeing Izuku's sword. Dude, that's yours, it looks so freaking heavy. Shoto said, eyes widen. Oh, that's an awesome sword for an awesome man. Kirishima said, while completely screaming on the inside as Izuku figured he might as well show the others holy requiem. No way, did you make that Izuku? Momo asked as Izuku nodded his head. Yep, and the sword was a gift from my dad. Izuku said while everyone continued being in awe of Izuku's weapons while Iida wasn't happy. This isn't cause for celebration, this is cause for outrage. Yagi is in possession of deadly weapons, Iida yelled at everyone, as they all looked at him. What is your problem now, Iida? So what if he has two weapons? Tokoyami asked, annoyed that Iida's screaming interrupted him admiring Izuku's sword. Such brutish and fiendish weapons are absolutely unacceptable to be used by heroes. Iida proclaimed as everyone just could not believe what he was saying, right as Yang stood up and spoke. 
Wow, do you always act like a dick to everyone you met, or are you just having a bad day because the stick up your ass is slight crooked? Yang joked, getting a laugh out of everyone as Iida got angry, right as Y spoke up. So what, you think heroes shouldn't use any weapons at all? Weiss asked, getting up in Iida's face as the others kept quiet. Absolutely, such horrid weapons are a disgrace and are only used by villains. Iida shot back at Weiss, as the Ice Queen was completely shocked of the stupidity in Iida's comms. So huntsmen and huntresses don't count as heroes to you, who died and made you the judge of heroic standards. Y snapped at Iida, making him slightly step back a bit before regaining his composure. Oh please, huntsmen and huntresses aren't even close to being heroes, all people like you do is hunt down and kill those stupid grim monsters and nothing else. And the fact you and your friends rely on weapons makes you all pathetic and brutish. Iida proclaimed as Weiss gritted her teeth, while the rest of Team Rubai and JNPR were getting fed up with Iida's attitude. Excuse you, huntsmen and huntresses have just as much for the world as heroes have. Maybe if you stopped being full of yourself, you could. Before Weiss could continue, Iida began yelling at her. I will not be told by a shni of all people. Your family have done nothing but harm the world. Someone like you shall not be in such a prestigious school like Beacon or UA. Iida screamed at Weiss, taking her by surprise as she went to snap back at Iida, but her friends walked in front of her. If you have a problem with her father, that's fine, but don't go labeling Weiss a horrible person because of what he has done. Blake said as she glared daggers at Iida, who was completely taken aback by seeing Blake stand up for Weiss. Why are you standing up for her? Her family has made the lives of your kind a living hell. Iida said as Blake intensified her glare. Her father. Besides, you have a problem with her, you have a problem with us. Ruby said as Yang and Nora cracked their knuckles while John, Pur and Ren all looked ready to beat his ass, and before Iida could react, he was frozen in place, as Izuku turned to see Inko using her telekinesis to keep Iida still. You're coming straight to Nezu's office so we can have a lengthy conversation about your piss-poor attitude, Tenya Iida. Inko said as she picked Iida and headed towards Nezu's office as Tashinori followed her, mostly to prevent her from using, rather colorful language. A while later, Iri fell asleep as Yang tucked her in as she and Izuku headed to Ruby, Blake and Weiss's room, seeing those three, John, Purit, Ren, Nora and Momo as Izuku closed the door. So, what's this you need to talk about Blake? Izuku asked as Blake looked over to Momo, piquing Izuku's curiosity. Momo, something wrong? Izuku asked, with lots of concern in his voice as Momo got up and opened a drawer as Izuku and the others all took a look inside and found a bunch of love letters she's gotten over the past while. Momo, what's going on? Izuku asked, more concerned than he was before as Blake put her hand on Momo's shoulder as reassurance. I think I might have a stalker Izuku. I've been getting these letters for a while now, which I didn't pay much attention to at first, but recently they've been getting more and more frequent, and I'm getting worried. Momo said as she started shaking, leading to Izuku hugging her to calm her down. Blake then grabbed a random letter as she opened it before she read it, and what Blake saw was leaning towards the extremely creepy side to say the least, putting it down before she felt sick reading it. Yeah, you're justified in being worried Momo. Whoever is writing you these letters is definitely obsessed with you. Blake said as Momo began to freak out, but thankfully Ruby and Blake rubbed her back to keep her calm. Right, so Momo has a stalker. Any ideas? John asked as Izuku quickly thought of an idea. Well obviously, we need to keep a close eye on Momo, case her stalker tries anything. So, her staying here for a while should do the trick. Izuku said as the others nodded their heads as Ruby perked up. Oh, and we should all take turns being with Momo whenever she's in public, so the stalker doesn't get suspicious if one of is suddenly around her all the time. Ruby said leading to the others all being agreement when Weiss thought of something. Should we inform the other teachers about this? Weiss questioned, as the others took a moment to think before John speaks up. Well, we could, but we're not fully sure of what's going on here. Like, it could just be some harmless weirdo who's a bit too straightforward. So for now, let's just tell Urza, and if things start to escalate, then we tell the other teachers. John suggested as everyone's stomachs rumbled as Izuku decided to make some food, while Weiss decided to help him. Izuku, thank you so much for looking out for me. Momo said as Izuku got up, as he smiled at Momo. It's what friends are for, Momo. Izuku said as he and Weiss left while well, Momo's heart started beating fast, just hearing what Izuku said to her made her flustered, but did her best to keep it hidden. Izuku and Weiss were making some katsudan as Weiss couldn't help but look at Izuku, slightly blushing due to Izuku just being himself, while well, she was having some interesting thoughts about Izuku. Amnit, why can't I get Izuku out of my head? I shouldn't be thinking of Izuku like this, he's dating Yang. No matter how hard I try, I can't stop thinking about him. Weiss internally yelled at herself for having feelings for Izuku as she decided to break the silence. It's nice how loyal you are to your friends, Izuku. 
Y said as Izuku looked over to her and just chuckled. Hey, that's just who I am Weiss, helping anyone I can. After all, I helped you be a better person when I hardly knew you. Izuku said, smiling while Weiss just smiled back. Yeah, I heard from Momo you did the same thing with both her and Todoroki during the sports festival. Y said as Izuku just nodded. Yeah, Shoto was basically a repeat of what happened with you. Though he was actively holding back his true potential just despite his father. Though can't really blame him for all the shit Endeavor did to him and his family. Izuku explained as he and Weiss finished making the katsudan, as they started heading back to the others, while they just talked to each other. Like, Shoto's my best friend, but John will be and always will be my brother in everything but blood. Izuku said as Weiss just giggled. Given what I've heard about what you two did when you were younger from Yang, Ruby and Pura, I can see why. Y said, as Izuku just smiled sheepishly. Did either of them tell you about the Halloween party we had where I went as Dante and John went as Spider-Man? Izuku asked as Weiss thought for a moment before shaking her head no. Oh trust me, that night was bayonth nuts. Should get around to telling you guys that story sometime. Izuku said as he and Weiss got back to the others as they set the food down, leading to everyone digging in and enjoying the food. You honestly surprise me with what you can do, Izuku. Momo said, as Izuku just chuckled and rubbed the back of his head. Doesn't hurt to have a few hobbies, that and I had lots of free time when we were kids. John's free time mostly comprised of getting dragged all over the place by his sisters. Izuku said, laughing like an idiot as John just rolled his eyes. Coming from you, you spent plenty of your time with Yang and Ruby back then. John quipped back at Izuku. Least I got lots of sleep back then. Izuku joked back, leaving John just shaking his head while laughing as he flipped Izuku off. Love you too, bro. Izuku said as everyone was just log at Izuku and John's little verbal spare as they kept on eating, while just enjoying being together while Momo, Ruby, Weiss and Blake, all couldn't help but keep thinking about the lovable broccoli boy, but had heartache due to Izuku already being with Yang. However, things weren't going to go in the way they thought it would, rather each of them were going to get what they want, though not without lots of crazy turns. The next day came around as Eri woke up early as she looked at Izuku and Yang sleeping, making the little snowball smile, seeing how happy her mama and papa were in their sleep. I wonder what mama's dreaming about. Oh, she's probably dreaming of beating up a bunch of meanie heads. Eri said to herself as she got out of bed, and her childish curiosity got the better of her as she looked under the bed and found Yang's bunny outfit. Oh, mama must like playing dress up. Eerie said to herself as she put the bunny outfit away as she snuck out of the room and headed towards Team JNPR's room as she slightly opened the door as saw John, Purrit, Ren and Nora sleeping as the little bean got an idea and made her way to the kitchen with a big smile on her face. John, Purrit, Ren and Nora all woke up as they smelled something delicious as they saw pancakes on their nightstand, as well as a note from Eerie, as John grabbed the note and read it. Enjoy the pancakes aunties and uncles, love your adorable snowball niece. The note read as Purrit and Nora couldn't handle the cuteness from their snowball niece, while John and Ren just smiled before they ate the pancakes. Ruby, Weiss, Blake and Momo all woke up as they also saw pancakes made by Eerie, along with a similar note she wrote, as the girls were touched by the little bean's kindness as they started eating. Eerie is so cute and kind. Ruby said as she quickly stuffed her face with pancakes, to the amusement of her friends. Izuku and Yang then woke up as they saw Eerie holding a plate of pancakes as she smiled at them. Morning mama and papa, I made pancakes. Eerie said with a big smile, making Izuku and Yang smile back as Eerie handed them the pancakes and got back onto the bed. Oh, you didn't have to do the snowball. Yang said as she kissed Eerie on the cheek and hugged her as the family started eating the pancakes, with Yang feeding Eerie. Wow, these taste great. Good job Eerie. Izuku said as he gave Eerie headpats, making the snowball and Yang smile. Thanks papa, I had lots of lessons from grandma. Eerie said as Izuku smiled, while Yang lifted Eerie onto her lap as the family continued eating breakfast. Izuku then finished eating and decided to go for a quick morning jog, kissing Yang and Eerie on their cheeks as he headed out for his jog, leaving the mother and daughter together. Hey mama, do you like playing dress up? Eerie asked Yang, as she innocently tilted her head while looking at her mama, making Yang curious about why Eerie asked her that. What makes you ask that, Eerie? Yang asked as she held her little snowball in her lap. Well, I looked under the bed and I found a bunny outfit underneath, so I figured you like playing dress up. Eerie said as Yang's face immediately turned bright red, out of sheer embarrassment hearing that while Eerie was confused. Mama? Eerie asked as Yang immediately regained her composure, but her face was still bright red. Sweetie, don't go looking through our things without asking us first, okay? Yang said as Eerie nodded her head, as Yang sighed in relief and patted her on the head. And maybe don't tell your papa about it. Yang said, as Eerie nodded her head again which made Yang completely relax as she and Eerie continued their breakfast. 
Izuku was out for his jog which went as well as you'd expect, but throughout the jog Izuku felt like he was being watched and felt a hint of malice in the air before he picked up the pace, quickly making it back to the dorms as he took a second to catch his breath. Odd, what was with that malice I sensed while outside? Izuku thought to himself as he went to the fridge and grabbed a bottle of water before noticing Katsumi walk into the common area, leading to an awkward silence. Is, I meant Yagi. Katsumi started, looking uncomfortable as Izuku just looked at her and took a drink of his water. The Kugo. Was all Izuku said as he walked past her and back towards his room when she said something that caught him off guard. Nice sword and gun. Katsumi said, which surprised Izuku as he wasn't expecting that, leaving him wondering why she didn't try throwing herself at him, but Izuku wasn't about to complain as he went back to his room. Time passed as the class were all very pleasantly surprised to learn that Inko was going to be their new homeroom teacher, well all except Iida, since he believed Inko would just let Izuku and his group get away with whatever they wanted, due to being Izuku's mother and a popular hero. And Inko was not pleased with the slander Iida was throwing at her, as she threatened to further increase Iida's punishment, being more time under house arrest for his behavior, which made Iida shut his mouth, but didn't stop him from shooting dirty looks at Izuku and his group. After class was over, Izuku was getting ready to head out with Yang, Ruby, Weiss and Blake, as he and Yang both hugged Iri before they left, leaving Iri under Urza's watch, while the little snowball was watching some Vinosauce as they went out. The five made it to the city as they just did whatever they could think, just being glad to be hanging out together as they eventually made it to the mall, as Yang, Ruby and Blake were all looking for stuff, while Izuku and Weiss were waiting outside the store they were in. I'm surprised you're able to put up with Iida's nonsense, Izuku. Anyone else would have been driven insane, we definitely would have by now. Y said while looking at Izuku, as he rubbed the back of his head. Hey, hey, I'm not the hateful type, you girls should know that by now. And you're making lots of assumptions that he hadn't driven some of the class absolutely crazy. Izuku said while smiling, causing Weiss to have a small blush. Just hearing Iida open his mouth makes me remember how awful I was. Y said, remembering some unpleasant memories as Izuku rubbed her back. Hey, let's not dwell on the past Weiss, let's focus on the future. Izuku said as Weiss nodded her head in agreement as Yang, Ruby and Blake finished getting what they were getting as they continued going about their day. A while later, Izuku was with Yang as she was picking some new outfits, which she wanted Izuku's feedback as she showed him the first outfit. What do you think of this one, hun? Yang asked as Izuku gave his answer by smiling and giving Yang a thumbs up, which made Yang smile as she changes into the next outfit. Wow, call me a motorcycle because I want you to ride me. Izuku said, which made himself and Yang both blush as she changed again, and Izuku definitely liked what he saw, to which Yang smirked. Aren't you getting hot and heavy, H-U-B-B-Y Yang said, seductively as she did a little pose for her Izuku, while Izuku was blushing like a mad lad, while giving it everything he has to not pop a boner, as Yang changes into the last outfit. Izuku blushed again as he simply nodded as Yang smiled, happy with Izuku's honesty with his feedback, as she changed back as she went to pay for the outfits. A while after that, Izuku and the girls were chilling at a park as Yang, Ruby and Weiss were taking naps as Izuku and Blake were sitting against a tree. This was nice, just us hanging out together. Blake said as she looked at Izuku who just smiled at her. Yeah, I missed hanging out with you guys since I started UA honestly, part of me wishes I went to Beacon so I could have spent much more time with you all, but it is what it is. Izuku said to Blake as she noticed her hand was not too far from Izuku's, as part of her wanted to hold his hand, but she didn't as she moved her hand away from Izuku's. Izuku, I feel like I never got to fully thank you. Blake said as Izuku turned to her, wondering what she meant. Helping me come to terms and fully accept myself and with that whole mess when Adam tried taking me and Weiss, those along with other things you've done, it feels like I can never show you how grateful I am for all of it. Blake said to Izuku as he turned to fully face her, before he smiled at her. You don't have to do anything to thank me Blake. You're one of my friends, and as long as you're happy, that's all I care about. Izuku explained to Blake, as she found herself failing more for Izuku as she cursed herself for being so weak-willed when it came to Izuku, and for loving her friend's boyfriend. Back at the dorms, Iri was coloring while John and Pura were talking with Urza about Momo's possible stalker. Well, this is definitely concerning. Urza said while looking at Momo with concern for her well-being. Well, we're not 100% sure it's definitely a stalker we're dealing with, but it's seeming that's the case, but we don't have much proof. Pura explained to her older sister as John nodded his head. And given that both Blake and Izuku both have experiences with stalkers, being worried is more than understandable. And we all agreed on taking turns watching over Momo. John further elaborated to Urza. So, it's currently just a bunch of love letters, am I correct? Urza asked as both Pura and John nodded their heads. And reading just one of them made Blake feel sick. 
Pura said, making all three cringe. Meanwhile, Mina and Toru snuck into Izuku and Yang's room, hoping to find some rather juicy stuff about Izuku and Yang's relationship, as they both looked around the room for anything they could find, but to no avail. Ugh, no fair. There has to be something we can find. Mina complained as she lifted up the mattress, finding nothing as she moaned with frustration. I don't even know what Izuku sees in that Yang girl. He's way too good for her. Mina said as Toru turned to look at Mina. I'm not sure Mina, they both seem to really love each other a lot. That and them being childhood friends helped that. Toru said as Mina completely disregarded what Toru just said as she looked under the bed and found a case with a lock, as Mina used her quirk to melt the lock and opened the briefcase and found music CDS inside. Huh? What's with these CDS? Toru asked as Mina quickly ran out of the room to her room and came back with a CD player and played one of the CDS, and she was completely shocked with what she heard. It was Izuku singing. Izuku, Yang, Ruby, Weiss and Blake all made it back to the dorms as Ruby had a present for Eerie, and before Izuku opened the door, he heard something. What the? Is that one of my songs playing? I don't remember. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Izuku opened the door as he saw Mina, Toru, Kirishima, Sayu and Sato huddled around a CD player as he wasn't pleased. Hey, what are you all doing? Izuku yelled as he walked over as he saw his case of CDS besides Mina, as he took the disc out of the player and put it back with the others. What the hell were you doing? Izuku shouted, wanting to know why they were listening to one of his songs. Dude, we didn't know you could sing, that's so manly. Kirishima complimented, but Izuku wasn't in the mood for compliments. Save it Kirishima, how did you find those and why are you all listening to them? Izuku asked, not in the mood to beat around the bush as Mina stood up. Well, me and Toru found them while we were in your room and. You were snooping in our room why? Izuku snapped at Mina, while shaking her by the shoulders, and was definitely not happy his privacy was violated. W well, we were curious about what you and Yang get up to and. Mina tried to explain before Yang cut her off. What me and Aizu get up to is our business, and definitely not yours, Pinky. Yang snapped at Mina as Ruby, Blake and Weiss all stepped back a bit. Izuku, why did you keep this from us? Ribbit, do you not trust us? Sayu bluntly asked, as Izuku just rolled his eyes. Trust has nothing to done with this, Asui. Just because we're friends doesn't mean you're all entitled to know everything single detail about my life. Especially when an aspect has been told without my knowledge or consent. Izuku said while glaring at Mina. Come on, we didn't mean anything wrong, we were just curious with what Mina wanted to show us. Sato said, but Izuku wasn't having it. Doesn't matter, she violated me and Yang's privacy to satisfy her consent need for gossip. This is exactly why I never mentioned my songs or Yang before, because I knew the two gossip queens would blow it way out of prop for no reason. Izuku yelled, while pointing at Mina and Toru as he closed his case of music and went back to his room, as Kirishima tried to stop him. Dude, come on, we're sorry. Our curiosity was killing us, you know. Kirishima tried to explain, but Izuku shut him up. Yet, you didn't think to call and ask me about it, or ask John, Pura or Urza about. Or just telling Ishido going through someone else's stuff without their knowledge isn't right. But then again, you always just went along with all her nonsense. Izuku said as he and Yang went back to their room as Ruby, Weiss and Blake did the same. Hiroshima, Sato, Sayu and Toru all looked down with shame that they betrayed Izuku's trust by going through his stuff, while Mina didn't see the problem, and just thought Izuku was over re cause she went to the kitchen and found herself face to face with Momo. Unbelievable Ishido. Going through Izuku's things without any regard for his privacy. I knew you were lacking with your intelligence, but I didn't think you were this stupid and naive. Momo said to Mina, with a stern tone in her voice as Mina just rolled her eyes. Oh, don't bother dick riding Izuku just because you love him. Mina said while smirking as Momo was shocked Mina knew about her feelings for Izuku. You didn't do a good job at hiding it, and I found and read your diary that one time me, Toru, Sayu and Achako were studying in your room. Mina admitted stupidly as Momo wanted to yell at Mina for going through her stuff, but she didn't, for whatever reason. You're wasting your time anyway, Mina said, not seeming to notice or care that she's hurting Momo's feelings with what she's saying. And you'd be better off with that one guy from 1B, what was his name again? The one with the headband. Oh, a waste. Mina said which completely hurt Momo and made her confidence go down a good bit, while absolutely hating Mina for having the nerve to tell her who she can and can't love, as Mina walked off to her room. Which left Momo in a state of self-loathing as she just left to her room, with what Mina said playing on repeat in her head as she reached her room, floated on her bed while starting to tear up. Izuku and Yang were relaxing in their room as Iri was bouncing around with joy, while enjoying her present from Ruby, being a mini version of Ruby's huntress outfit, which made the two smile. Mama, Papa, I'm a little white rose. 
Yuri said as she spun around, making her little cape spin as she kept jumping before finding herself being picked up by Ruby. Auntie Ruby. Yuri said with a big all smiled and hugged Ruby. Your little white rose, Yuri. Come on Snowball, Auntie Weiss wants to do your hair. Ruby said which got Yuri very excited as the two left Izuku and Yang's room as Urza walked in, just after the two just left. She's such a precious little angel. Urza said with a smile on her face as she walked into the room and sat on the floor in front of Izuku and Yang. Yeah, she is. I've been doing all I can to give Yuri a normal childhood since I saved her. It's not much of a hassle, but given Yuri's enthusiasm, it's occasionally a bit much. Izuku said while smiling and chuckling as Yang smiled and held his hand. So, me, John and Pura overheard your little spat earlier. Urza said as Izuku and Yang just moaned out of frustration. Oh, don't get me started on that. Ashido is either too stupid or doesn't care that snooping in other people's business is not okay. Izuku complained out of justifiable frustration over Mina's complete disregard for his Yang's privacy. I'm guessing she and Iida are the reasons why you never mentioned you and Yang are part of fairy tale. Urza asked as Izuku nodded his head to answer her question. Right on the money Urza. Iida would probably pull something out of his tailpipes to make the guild look bad, while Ishido would try to post it all over the internet. Izuku said, genuinely annoyed and frustrated that despite his attempts to get along with Iida and Mina, they just have to do something to paint them in a negative light. Iida constantly showing everyone up and trying to prove he is superior to everyone around, making himself look like a total moronic dictator in the process, and Mina's inability to comprehend the gravity of both any situations and her own actions, either because she simply doesn't see it or chooses not to do she can get what she wants. Before Izuku could delve into his thoughts, he noticed Blake in the doorway as Yang and Urza turned to face her. Hey Izuku, mind calling Momo? I tried calling her twice a few minutes ago, but she didn't answer. Blake explained which confused Izuku. Odd, Momo normally calls back if she had a missed call and only keeps her ringer off during class. And there's no way she's already sleeping at this hour. Izuku said as he pulled out his phone and called Momo twice, with no answer as he shot up. Yep, something is up, we have to check on her. Izuku said as he, Yang, Urza and Blake headed to Momo's room, being the first place they'd think to look for her. They quickly reached Momo's room as Izuku went to knock on the door, as he could overhear Momo's crying, as he immediately opened the door as he, Yang, Blake and Urza saw her crying, as they all ran to Momo and hugged her. Momo, what's wrong? Blake asked as Izuku wiped her tears away, as the crying girl looked at her friends. Ashido, she. I tried to reprimand her for violating your privacy, but she completely disregarded what I was saying, then she just insulted me for no reason, and brought up how easily I lost to Tokoyami. Momo said, leaving out the part that Mina knows that she loves Izuku as he got pissed. The RRRRR, that's it. I'm giving Ishido a piece of my mind. Izuku said, angrily as he want to leave, but Blake stopped him in his tracks. I'll handle this Izuku. You and Yang stay and make Momo feel better. Blake said as she ran off to Mina's room as Urza decided to follow her, leaving Izuku and Yang behind to cheer up Momo. Momo, don't let what Ishido said get under your skin. She just said it to feel better about herself. Especially when you consider she also lost to Tokoyami, way faster than you if I remember properly. Izuku said to Momo, while putting a hand on her shoulder. Yeah, Pinky's probably just extremely jealous that you and I are built fruity. Yang said while chuckling, making Momo embarrassed while Izuku froze in place. Lots of girls would kill to even half as good as we do, she knows that, and that is probably driving her mad. Trust me, I've been in that situation a few times before. Granted most of it was after me and Izuku got together, but that's beside the point. Yang said as she put her arm around Momo. Point is, don't let her get under your skin, and that she's not worth being seen as a friend, given how she behaves. Yang said to Momo as Izuku grabbed a tissue and wiped her tears away. As for Blake, she and Urza made it to Mina's room as she pounded on the door, not getting in response as Blake pounded on the door again, only for Blake to open the door, seeing Mina's not inside, but she gets an idea, before pulling out her phone and started looking around Mina's room. Blake, are you sure this is a good idea, seeing as she just did the same thing to Izuku and Yang? Urza asked Blake as she took pictures of several personal secrets of Mina's. The way I see it Urza, this is giving her a taste of her own medicine. Besides, I'm only doing this to have an insurance policy if she tries anything stupid again. Blake said as she finished get what she needed before heading back to Momo's room and saw Momo feeling better when she got back. That was fast, you gave her an earful. Yang asked as Blake just shook her head no. Didn't feel like chasing her. Besides, I made an insurance policy if she ever does something like that again. Blake said as she walked to Momo and gave her a hug when they saw something that definitely made Momo's day. Mama, Papa, look what Auntie Weiss did to my hair. 
Eerie said while smiling and jumping up and down, before jumping onto Momo's bed and gave her a hug. Look how cute I am Auntie Momo. Eerie said to Momo, completely full of energy while hugging her. You really look more cute now, Eerie. Momo said as she gave Eerie some head pats, making her happy which in turn made Momo happy, as they spent the rest of the day together. Two weeks later. The class were in participating in practice battles to which Mina stupidly chose to fight Blake and Yang, at the same time as Ruby leaned towards Izuku. How long do you think it'll take for Blake and Yang to beat her? Ruby asked Izuku as he put two fingers on his chin. It really depends how much of her brain Ashido uses. If she uses the amount she normally uses, Yang and Blake will beat her instantly. But if she uses more of her brain than normal, still won't last too long. Izuku said to Ruby who nodded her head, as Yang and Blake got in front of Mina. You sure you want to do this, Pinky? Yang asked as Mina completely disregarded what she just said. Oh, don't chicken out, I'm putting your money where your mouths are, thinking you're both hot shit. Mina said with a tiny hint of venom in her voice as Yang and Blake got into battle stances and readied their weapons. Alright, just remember, we gave you an out. Blake said as Mina ran towards the pair, only for her to trip and fall flat on her face, to the amusement of everyone. Or she can just fall flat on her face, that works too. Izuku said while he and Ruby were having a laughing fit as Blake and Yang just looked at Mina. Welp, that was anticlimactic. Blake said as she and Yang turned and walked away. Thus she got all tripped up. Yang said while chuckling while Blake just rolled her eyes as Mina got up and tried to attack the two while their backs were turned, but Yang bashed her elbow into Mina's face, sending her flying back. Wow, didn't know you're also a coward too. Yang said as Mina got back up and wiped off some blood from her nose. Brrrr, shut up you big titted bimbo. Mina shouted at Yang who just smirked. Hey, don't be jealous because I'm built with fruit on my chest. Yang said as she did a little pose with showed off her assets very nicely, making Mineta, Kaminari and Siro ogle at Yang, but Izuku blasted the three perverts with lightning, making them fall on their asses. Those melons are all mine creep shows. Izuku shouted as Mina rushed Yang and Blake, as she threw incredibly weak and obvious punches at the pair, which they dodged them all with ease, which made Mina very frustrated and threw a kick at Yang, who dodged and used her gauntlets to launch herself away from Mina, which left her in shock. What the hell, those things are also shotguns. Mina yelled out as Yang looked deadpan at her. You know Crescent Rose can turn into a sniper rifle, but you're shocked my gauntlets double as shotguns. Yang asked as Blake used Mina's shock to her advantage and kicked her in the face before throwing her into the ground. Hey, no fair. Mina snapped at Blake as she tried to trip up Blake, but failed horribly. Anything goes in a fight. Blake said as Mina tried to kick her below the belt, but Blake dodged right as Mina got back up only for Blake to punch her right in the breasts. Kind of like that. Blake said with a light smirk on her face as Mina yelled out in pain. Oh, that fucking hurt, you fattest kitty. Mina yelled out towards Blake as Mina ran towards her, but Blake jumped over her and knocked her onto the ground. You wish you had an ass like mine. Blake said as Yang rushed towards Mina and decked her across the face, sending her flying back again, as the three perverts started giggling right before Weiss uses her semblance to trap their little friends in ice, making them scream in pain. Huh, guess they'll get literal blue balls. Izuku joked which got some laughs from his friends, as Mina charged Blake and Yang again, only to end up getting punched in the face by Yang, sending her to the ground and knocking her out cold. Nice shot babe. Izuku said to Yang, which made her smile as Tsai looked at Izuku with disbelief on her face. Ribbit, Izuku, don't you care your girlfriend just knocked Mina out cold, Tsai asked as Izuku just looked at her. Hey, Ashido brought this on herself. Invading me and Yang's privacy, insulting Momo for no good reason, and just being annoying and an idiot. Plus, she should be grateful it wasn't me she was fighting otherwise I'd give a new meaning to shock and awe. Izuku said as he and the others headed back inside as Mineta, Kaminari and Siro tried to break free from the ice they were stuck in. Oh relax, the ice will melt in a few hours, so you all have time to chill out. Wai said with a chuckle as Yang gave Weiss a fist bump as they went back to the dorm, while Tsai took Mina to recovery girl. A while later, Izuku and Ruby were in the kitchen, making some food for Eri which they finished as they started walking back to his and Yang's room. It's adorable how much of a devoted father you are to Eri, Izuku. Ruby said to Izuku as he just smiled. Thanks Ruby. Given I was the first person to show Eri genuine kindness and affection, she quickly imprinted on me and saw me as her papa, and she didn't want me to leave her side. Especially when she was getting checked when we saved her. Izuku said, which made Ruby smile how the effort Izuku puts into being a father. Eri's lucky to have you and Yang as parents. Wish I'm as good of a mother that Yang is. Ruby said as she looked down as Izuku lifted her head and looked at her. Hey, I'm sure you'd make a great mother Ruby, I mean it. Izuku said which made Ruby smile. Thanks Izuku. 
Ruby set his Izuku patted her on the head and smiled. Don't mention it little Rose. Izuku said as he decided to mess with Ruby a little as he used his lightning to give Ruby a little zap, which made her jump. No fair Izuku. Ruby said while pouting while Izuku giggled and gave her head pats to calm her down, which worked as they made it back to Izuku and Yang's room as he handed Eerie the food, which the snowball quickly started eating after thanking Izuku and Ruby, making him, Ruby and Yang smile. Meanwhile, Blake was trying to sleep, but she was having a rather heated and intimate dream of her and Izuku, as Izuku whispered very sweet things in her ear, which made her blush and made her feel even more in bliss, feeling Izuku's rod inside her womanhood as he kissed her. I love you Blake. Despite being a dream, Blake longed to hear those words leave Izuku's mouth, as she saw a big all smile on the face of the one she loves, as she moved his hands onto her ass. I love you too Izuku. Now breed me and let's have some kittens. Blake said to Izuku, with a hint of love and lust in her voice as Izuku gladly went along with what Blake wanted, as he continued pounding her tuna, very much to her delight. Blake was a moaning mess as Izuku kept on thrusting, but also being very gentle with her, further adding to Blake's love and affection for him, as Izuku felt her folds get tighter. Ah, Izuku. Blake moaned, further adding to Blake's pleasure, as she kept on saying his name in complete bliss. And in an instant, Blake woke up from her dream, both embarrassed and annoyed, it suddenly ended the way it did, as she felt her thighs were wet, further adding to her embarrassment. I wonder if Yang would be open to share Izuku. Blake thought to herself for a moment before she gained a sadden expression on her face. Oh, who am I kidding, that's never going to happen. Blake said to herself as she looked down with sadness, believing that she would never get her chance to be with her knight in shining armor, as she put her hand over her heart. No matter how hard I try, I can't get him out of my head, why do I have to be so weak-willed? Blake said to herself right as she imagined Izuku with a smile on his face, which made her blush as she changed her underwear and pants, while also wiped her legs. And after that, Blake heard the door open as she saw Yang in the doorway, which surprised her. Why Yang? What's up? Blake asked as Yang just had a smile on her face. Up for a movie night Blake? Yang asked which Blake just nodded her head as Yang grabbed Blake's arm and dragged her to her and Izuku's room. Izuku, Yang, Ruby, Weiss, Blake, Momo and Urza were all watching all the cutscenes of the original Metal Gear Solid to shake things up, granted Weiss was a bit confused, but she was invested regardless. As for Eri, she was just coloring while sitting on the bed, completely in her own little world, while drawing pictures of her mama and papa, but little did the little snowball know, she was about to get more mamas. After they finished watching, Eri was fast asleep as Yang tucked her in and kissed her on her horn and cheek, making Eri smile in her sleep, as Yang and the others realized they were hungry, Izuku then went to the kitchen to get them something to eat, leaving Yang and the girls alone to talk. John was in the common area while looking at one of the love letters Momo got, as Puri hugged him from behind. What are you doing, John? Puri asked as she looked over John's shoulder. Cross-referencing the handwriting of the letter Momo's gotten with the handwriting of our classmates, and I'm pretty sure who's writing these is not in our class. John explained as Puri looked at the letter and at the hand of their classmates. Got the right idea there, ace detective. John and Puri turned to the kitchen as they saw Izuku baking some cookies. I did the same thing a few nights ago, and I hit the same conclusion you did, John. Though it is true they could have changed their handwriting, but that's a bit of a stretch. And even if that were the case, there would be certain word choices that would give it away. Izuku explained to John and Pur. Yeah, that makes sense, especially with certain people. John said as Izuku sat down with John and Pur while waiting for the cookies to finish baking, and the three started talking. Back with the girls, they were all enjoying hanging out whilst talking with each other, but Yang then dropped a bomb on them that they weren't ready for. So, when were you going to tell me you all love Izuku? That question caught Blake, Ruby, Weiss, Urz and Momo completely off guard, as all the girls immediately blushed bright red, leaving no room for them to denial as Ruby, Blake and Weiss all looked down at the ground. W well, we were hoping neither of you found out. Blake said, thinking that her and Yang's friendship was now completely destroyed, due to Yang being aware of her feelings for Izuku. Please, 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 please don't be too mad Yang I tried so hard, but Izuku's just so nice, kind and cute, I couldn't help it. Ruby said while hugging Yang's leg, scared to look her older sister in the eye. Well, why do you all love him? Yang asked which shocked the girls as they all looked at her. Wait, you're not mad? Weiss questioned Yang while having a look of confusion on her face. Depends on what your answers are. Yang said as the girls hesitated to answer as Ruby spoke up first. Well, Izuku's just so nice, kind and cute. That and he's just as passionate about quirks as I am about weapons, and he's always helped me whenever I needed it. Ruby said with a small blush on her face as Weiss went next. Izuku was the first person to see me purely as my own person, and despite my 
Very horrible behavior, Izuku didn't hesitate to help me get past the issues with my past and make me a better person. And I'd be lying if I said he isn't funny. Y said with a smile on her face, then Momo spoke up. For the past few years, most people around me either only wanted to be my friend just for my family's wealth and influence, or just wanted me for my body, but Izuku didn't and just saw me as me. And when he comforted me after I lost during the sports festival, it absolutely touched my heart and I couldn't help falling for him. And the way he's acts as Yuri's father is so cute. Momo said, while smiling and slightly blushing as Yang looked at Urza. W well, there was always something about Izuku that caught my eye, his wit and resourcefulness, his dedication to the people he cares about and his smile. Though I never considered fully going through with it, not wanting to make things between Izuku, John and Pura feel awkward. Urza explained as Yang finally looked at Blake, who was still looking at the ground, as Yang moved her head to where Blake was now looking at Yang. Blake, don't be scared. You're one of my best friends, and I trust you. Yang said softly as her and Blake's eyes met. Well, the first time you first introduced Izuku to me and Weiss, there was something that really got me, but I didn't think too much about it, since you and Izuku were dating. But the more I got to know Izuku, the more stronger my feels got for him, and I tried my best to get over them to not complicate our friendship. Blake said as she shed a tear as Yang wiped it away. But after my little spat with Weiss, and Izuku comforted me and told me what he went through when he was little, it honestly hurt me that he went through that for no good reason, and the fact we both went through unfair treatment for something out of our control, deepened our connection. But when Izuku said I should take a risk to reveal that I'm a frontist to the school, and that he'd always stick by me not matter what, that sealed the deal for me. Blake said while thinking about all the moments she had with Izuku as Yang hugged her. As if that wasn't enough, when Adam tried to kidnap me and Weiss, Izuku didn't hesitate to save us, regardless of the danger when I told him how strong he was, Izuku didn't care and wanted me and Weiss to be safe. Blake told Yang while having that memory in her mind. I'm surprised you didn't tell me this sooner. Yang said which completely caught the girls off guard. Huh? Blake said, completely in shock while Ruby and Weiss had confused looks on their faces. Blake, you thought I wouldn't have noticed by now, especially you, Ruby, why and Urza, why else do you think I was cool with you, Ruby and Weiss dancing with Izuku at the school dance. Yang asked her frontest friend, while well, Momo couldn't believe what was happening. Yang, are you saying what I think you're saying? Ruby asked as Yang nodded her head and smiled at her sister. I am Rubes, I'm open to sharing Aizu with you girls. Yang said which made the girls all smiled as they all hugged her. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you sis. Ruby said while smiling and hugging Yang the tightest, making Yang smile and pat her on the head. I'm really grateful you're giving a chance Xiaolong. I mean Yang. Momo said as Yang just smiled and chuckled, as did Weiss. Thank you Yang, I'm extremely grateful. Blake said as she smiled and her ears moved slightly as Yang smiled at her. Blake, I really trust all of you, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. Yang said as she hugged them as they all turned to see Izuku standing in the doorway, holding a plate of cookies, while blushing. Aizu, how long have you been there for? Yang asked as Izuku walked into the room as he put the cookies on his nightstand. Long enough to hear the girl's confessions, and I'm happy to take responsibility for their feelings for me. Izuku said as he smiled at his girlfriends, making them love him more. And the others were more than happy to hear Izuku is more than willing to love them the way he loves Yang as they hugged him. Darling. Blake said with lots of joy as she kissed Izuku, which did surprise Izuku a bit, but he melted into the kiss and also grabbed and squeezed her butt. Beep. Blake let out, but was blushing at Izuku's gentle touch as she looked her new boyfriend in the eyes and struck his cheek. I'm so happy this is really happening, I'm with my knight in shining armor. Blake said while smiling as Izuku stroked her cheek. I'll do whatever I can to make you all love just like I make Yang feel loved, that's my promise as a dragon slayer. Izuku said when Momo then kissed him on the cheek. And we'll do our best to be the best girlfriends for you Zuwu. Momo said while well, smiling as Ruby hugged Izuku from behind, making everyone giggle, then they heard Yuri, who heard the whole thing. Yay, I have more mamas. Yuri said with lots of joy in her voice while jumping up and down on the bed, before she smiled. Yuri then hugged her new mamas, making them all smile before Yuri grabbed one of the cookies Izuku made, as Izuku and the girls did as well while John and Pura were outside the room, as they just smiled and headed to their room, but unfortunately a very pissed off Mina, who also overheard bits of the conversation. DRRRR, those dumb skanks, they shouldn't be with him and what the fuck is a dragon slayer. Meanwhile, in a white fang hideout, several members were all on alert as they kept looking around whoever was in the hideout, when a few got knocked down with a fireball, then two got kicked within the face with a flaming kick and went sent flying into a nearby wall, as the person stood at the other remaining members who were still standing. I'm giving you all one chance. Adam Taurus, where is he? 
The person asked as the Fang members stupidly decided to piss him off. We aren't tell you shit, you fiery freak. One of the members shouted before another noticed a mark on the man's right shoulder, making all the members' hearts drop. Ahahaha, you're all just as stupid and arrogant as he is. Oh well then. The man then blasted fire from his mouth, getting a few white fang members, while all the others who were still standing were now more horrified, realizing who it is they're dealing with. Come on. The next morning came around as Izuku woke up as he found Ruby playing peekaboo with Eerie, making him smile as he got out of bed and stretched his arms and legs. Peekaboo. Ruby said to Eerie, making her giggle as Ruby gave her daughter a kiss on the cheek, before sitting her on her lap as Izuku hugged them. By Rose and Little Snowball. Izuku said while well, smiling as he gave Eerie head pats and gave Ruby a kiss. I'm never going to get tired of that feeling. Ruby said after they broke the kiss as Izuku smiled as the other girls got up before getting dressed and headed downstairs for breakfast. When they got to the common area, they were met with Ren making lots of pancakes, while Nora, John and Pura were sitting on the couch as Ren turned to look at them. Morning love birds. Ren said with a chuckle as Eerie ran to the table, making Izuku and his girlfriends giggle as they went to get some pancakes, right as John walked over to Izuku and patted him on the back. Congratulations bro. John said with a smile as Puri hugged Izuku and Urza, being very happy for her sister. Thanks guys. Izuku said as Blake sat on Izuku's lap and purred, making him smile as Yang sat beside him and rested her head against Izuku's shoulder, while Eerie was eating her pancakes. Careful Eerie, you'll get stomach aches if you eat too fast. Y said as she noticed Eerie was eating fast, and she smiled when she saw Eerie listen to her and slowed down with her eating. That's a good little bean, you don't want to get a tummy ache. Y said while she ruffled Eerie's hair, making the little snowball smile as Izuku kissed Weiss on the cheek. It's honestly cute and cool how much you care about Eerie's well-being, Weiss. Izuku said with a smile, while Yang giggled at Izuku's wordplay which just made the others roll their eyes and chuckle. So, what's on the schedule for today? Yang asked seeing as it was the weekend, and they all had nothing spectacular planned. Well one thing is for certain, this will definitely surprise everyone. Though certain people won't be too happy about this. Blake said while snuggling her face in Izuku's neck, before Ruby spoke up. It's our relationship, no one has a say in it, and if they don't like it, they can buzz the hell off. Ruby yelled out, surprising everyone, but Yang just smiled as she pulled Ruby in for a hug and ruffled her hair, before hearing a voice. I'll be, who would have thought the little rose had it in her? Natsu, what are you doing here? Izuku asked, very surprised to see his friend as he got up, ran over to him and gave him a hug. The guy can't come and see his friends. Natsu said while chuckling which made Izuku roll his eyes and shake his head, then Natsu noticed Iri as she looked at Yang. Mama, who's that? Iri asked Yang, which really caught Natsu off guard as he looked back and forth between Izuku and Yang. That's Natsu, he's a good friend of me and your papa. Yang explained to Iri as the little bean ran towards Natsu, before smiling at him. Hi Uncle Natsu. Iri said as Natsu was just frozen in place, unable to process the levels of cuteness coming from the little bean, before snapping out of it and lifted Iri up. Thus we have a very easy way to stop Natsu and Grey from fighting now. Pura said to Urza, getting her to giggle while Natsu decided to use his fire to do little tricks for Iri, quickly catching the snowball's attention. Wowie, it's so cool. Just like Papa and my mamas. Iri said, making Izuku and his girlfriends all smiled as Iri giggled. Yang, can I talk to you and Pura in private for a second? Urza asked as Yang and Pura nodded as they headed outside, so that no one could eavesdrop on their conversation. What's wrong Urza? Pura asked her older sister as Urza looked around to double check, no one was around to overhear what they're about to talk about. Did either of you find anything odd happening at Beacon? Urza asked the two as Yang and Pura immediately knew what she was talking about. Not really, no. Yang said before taking a moment to think before she remembered something. Actually, Osbin's too cryptic and secretive about damn near everything. And he also tried asking me and Pura about Izuku and John's powers, as well as our own. Yang told Urza which piqued her curiosity, but not in a good way. I see, what did you both tell him? Dust the bare minimum and kept the more important parts on the down low. Yang said as Pura then spoke up. And another weird thing. John told me, Nora and Ren that he saw the past users of Ofa. Pura said which really got Urza curious about it before asking Pura what they said to John. They told John not to trust a single word Osbin says. Pura said which definitely provided concern to both Yang and Urza, as they headed back inside, as they saw the boys all goofing around, while Liri was in her own little world coloring and listening to some more Vinisauce. And then I said, sweetheart, my flames automatically make me hotter than all of the women in the world combined. Natsu said as he, Izuku, John and Ren all bursted into laughter. Ahahaha, that's hilarious man. John said while rolling on the floor uncontrollably. 
Reminds me of one time some random thought tried to convince me she was better than Yang which I said, bitch, my girlfriend once beat up an whole club by herself, with ease might I add, and she's a billion times more beautiful than you, and she just walked away with saying a word. Izuku said in between his laughter while Yang blushed at what Izuku said. That sounds like something Yang would do. Blake said while still cuddling with Izuku with a smile on her face, then the rest of their classmates came into the common area, and things quickly got messy. Mina was fuming Momo was part of Izuku's harem, while Iida was just pissy that Izuku had a harem in the first place, saying it was wrong, and that Izuku was a man whore for manipulating multiple girls, then Yang literally slapped some sense into him, and said that they all genuinely love Izuku for who is he is. The argument then went from 2 to 11 fast when Iida called Yang a whore, causing Izuku and Ruby to both give him a double knuckle sandwich, however Iida saw something on the lower half of Izuku's arm before grabbing and showing it to the whole class, revealing Izuku's guild mark. This shocked everyone who wasn't aware of Izuku being part of Fairy Tail, but Iida was demeaning Izuku for having a tattoo, leading to Natsu giving him a flaming roundhouse kick to the face. It's not a tattoo, you four-eyed asshole. Our marks are proof we're more than a team, we're family. Natsu said to Iida as he and Izuku fist bumped. Izuku, were you planning on telling us this? Shoto asked as Izuku rubbed the back of his head. I was at some point, but this was one of the main reasons I held off on it. The other reason why was I didn't want any more unwanted attention to be forced onto you all. Izuku said as Ruby picked up Yuri and quickly took her back to Izuku's room to spare her of the fighting. Mina then made the dumb decision to let it slip that she knows Izuku's a dragon slayer, and says she could post this info onto social media, leading to Izuku and Natsu, both staring her down, while fire emitted from their bodies. Do it, cause even more unnecessary stress for everyone else, just to satisfy your urge for gossip, see where that gets you Izuku and Natsu said, before T posing to establish their dominance before calming down as Izuku then left with Blake and Yang, taking the two out for a date in the city. After making it to the city, Izuku quickly cooled down from the mess earlier, while enjoying being with Blake and Yang, and they were getting looks from lots of people, guys who were jealous of Izuku being with two beauties like Blake and Yang, while lots of women were both jealous of Blake and Yang being with such a cute boy, and were also jealous of their looks. But the trio paid them no mind as they enjoyed their date, before Blake suggested getting a book for Eerie which Izuku and Yang both agreed to. Meanwhile back at the dorms, Pura was in the middle of making something for Iri, when she overheard a conversation between Shoto, Kirishima, Sai, Mina and Kaminari. I don't get what the problem is, it's their relationship and they can do what they like. Plus, they're not hurting anyone. Shoto said, very clearly not wanting to be part of this discussion. The problem is he's hogging all the chicks for himself, it's not fair, Kaminari complained as Kirishima just face planned. That's seriously what your issue is? Him having multiple girlfriends and you not having one Kirishima asked, completely dumbfounded by Kaminari's problem. He's not leaving any for the rest of us, Kaminari snapped back at Kirishima. Well maybe you'd get somewhere if you actually tried to not be an idiot, you'd get somewhere. You tried to hit on your Raka and got shot down, tried flirting with Shiazaki during the sports festival, got your ass kicked, and you constantly are making jabs at Jiro's looks. Kirishima listed to Kaminari, who just looked confused. I don't insult Jiro's looks. Kaminari said as Kirishima and Shoto both face planned. And Ashido, I don't get your problem with Yayoi Rozu. Shoto said to Mina. Izuku's way too good for that rich bitch. Mina said as Shoto and Kirishima looked confused. The hell did she do to you? She helped you study for the final exam, and suddenly you think you can decide her love life, Kirishima said while snapping at Mina. Kiri, I. Oh don't bother, I'm done with your BS. The moment Izuku gets back, I'm apologizing to him for invading his and Yang's privacy, even though you lied and said he was fine with it. Kirishima said to Mina, basically calling off their friendship without actually saying it outright. I don't understand why Izuku even sees in them, Ribbit. Xiaolong's too much of a trigger happy brute, Rose is too immature and shouldn't even be here, Belladonna gives off an unpleasant aura, and she's probably a spy for the White Fang, Naiko's older sister is horrifying and too uptight, and need I say more about Shni. Tsai said, extremely bluntly as Pura overheard what Tsai said and wasn't too thrilled about what she said about her friends. Ribbit and his friends aren't safe either. Arcs and stupid goofball who probably faked his way to where he is now, Ren's too quiet and a probably a massive buzzkill, Valkyrie is far too annoying for anyone to stand, Nikos is too damn perfect at everything, and is too damn nice for her own good, and that Natsu is a loud, arrogant moron. Tsai continued as Shoto and Kirishima all looked at Tsai with looks of shock and disgust on their faces, before they heard Pura slam her fist against the table. Listen here Asui, I don't care if you have any issues with me, but don't you dare say anything bad about my John, my sister and my friends yes, we all have our faults, but everyone does. 
Maybe if you got to know them better, you'd see all their good traits. Pura snapped at Sai, completely freaking her out before Pura turned to Mina. As for you, your issue with Momo is beyond petty, and you have no right to decide how her love life goes. She's the only one who can decide that, not you, not fate, her. Pura then turned to face Kaminari, who was very clearly looking at her chest, and very quickly slapped him across the face. Least you two are judgment and perverted. Pura said to Shoto and Kirishima before finishing what she was making for Iri and heading to the little snowball, as Shoto and Kirishima walked off as well. Back with Izuku. Lake got a book that Iri would really like, and also couldn't resist picking up some smut for herself, which made Izuku and Yang giggle. Thinking of getting some tips or what Blake? Could have asked me you know. Yang said while chuckling, making Blake embarrassed as Izuku just smiled and held her hand as he looked up into the sky, and he swore he saw a raven, but just shrugged it off as he, Blake and Yang kept on walking. However, they were unknowingly being watched by three people up on the rooftops. You got to be kidding me Cinder, that's one of the two who sealed her away. Yes, no doubt about it. And his friend had pink hair. He is pretty cute. So, what's our plan? Simply, we get close to him and his friends, find a way to break the seal he casted upon her, and get the other half of the Fall Maiden's power. Once we complete that, no one will stand in the way of our evil plans. Izuku, Blake and Yang got back from their date, and the moment they walked into the dorms, Pura told them everything Tsayu said about them, and it was safe to say Izuku wasn't happy in the slightest, as he marched right up to Tsayu and bitch slapped the frog girl across the face. This act of aggression really caught Tsayu off guard as Izuku glared at her, with lots of rage in his eyes. Listen, and listen well Asui, you have no right to judge my girlfriends when you barely know them, and you sure as hell have no right to judge who I date, and how many people I date. Izuku said, while trying his best not to snap as Tsai was actually very scared. I I Izuku, I. Save it Asui, you are not allowed to call me by my first name. And if you have issues with my friends and girlfriends, don't talk behind their backs like a coward. Izuku said, with lots of venom in his voice as he shoved Tsai out of his way as he grabbed something from out of the fridge before he, Blake and Yang walked to his room. And by the way, lose your blunt and bitchy attitude, otherwise you will end up hurting people's feelings and get yourself into trouble. Izuku said as the three walked away along with Pura. Is there just something about us that the others don't like about us? Do we come off as unpleasant people or something? Yang asked as they got close to her and Izuku's room, while Blake just shrugged her shoulders. I hope not, I thought we made good first impressions when we got here. Blake said as her ears drooped in sadness while Yang held her hand. Maybe we can do something for the others. Like setting up a party or something. Yang suggested as they reached Izuku's room. That could work, hopefully. Izuku said, having some hope as he opened the door and saw Iri cuddling with Ruby, like she was a massive teddy bear, while Weiss was laying on the floor studying. Hey, Papa. Iri said with a big smile as Izuku smiled and placed what he grabbed from the fridge down, before sitting beside Ruby and Iri. You two look so adorable right now. Izuku said while smiling, as Iri hugged Ruby tighter as Yang and Blake took pictures of them. What did you bring up, Aizu? Ruby asked as Izuku smiled and took off the cloth that was covering what he brought up, revealing it to be a cake. Oh, what kind is it? Ruby asked with a lot of excitement in her voice, while Leary was slightly drooling due to how tasty the cake looks. Cookie flavored cake. Izuku said as Ruby quickly shot up, handed Eerie to Weiss before giving Izuku a big hug. Cookie flavored cake I could kiss you right now, Izuku. Then kiss me Ruby. Izuku said, which Ruby quickly responded without hesitation as she and Izuku kissed. You're the bestest boyfriend a girl can ask for, Aizu. Ruby said with lots of love and affection in her voice which made Izuku smile, while Liri was giggling at her papa and mama expressing their love for each other. Hey, don't hog Izuku to yourself Ruby. Wai said before she kissed Izuku while holding Iri in her arms. Don't worry Wise, there's enough of me for all out you. Izuku said with a chuckle as Yang and Blake grabbed his arms, right as Urza and Momo came in as Momo hopped onto his lap, and Urza wrapped her arms around his back. Pace in point. Izuku said as his girlfriends hugged him with smiles on their faces as John came in. Eyes, I might have made a newbie. John, what did you do? Izuku asked as he raised an eyebrow. Well, I was talking with Saf over the phone, and I thought it was a good idea to show her a picture of Eerie. John explained as he showed Izu and the others which picture he used. I think I can guess what a reaction was. Izuku said as John nodded his head. Yep, she screamed, cooted and showed it to Tara, and probably will show it to the rest of our sisters and our parents. Scratch that, she definitely will. John, you should have seen that one coming. Izuku said, deadpan as Yang ruffled Eerie's hair. Uncle John, how many sisters do you have? Eerie asked, while innocently tilting her head. Seven sisters. John said as Weiss and Blake both fell over out of pure shock. Seven, how? 
Weiss questioned, in complete disbelief, while Eerie just smiled at John's answer. Bowie, that must be fun. Eerie said while still hugging Ruby. Hey, it's 50 50ths. Still prefer hanging out with Izuku above all else. John said as he walked over to the group hug and gave Izuku a fist bump. Don't let Pura hear you say that. Izuku said while chuckling as John lifted Eerie onto his shoulders. Hey, all I have to do is show her this little bean, and she'll immediately lose any and all anger. John said while poking Eerie's cheek, making her giggle as they started eating the cake, which Ruby definitely enjoyed, for obvious reasons. MMMMM, this tastes amazing. Ruby said with lots of joy in her voice as she enjoyed eating her slice while Izuku kissed her cheek. I knew you'd love it Ruby. Izuku said as he kissed Ruby on the cheek, while Iri was also enjoying her piece of cake. Wow, this is really yummy, Papa. Iri said as she finished her slice of cake, before burping afterwards, but made sure to say excuse me. After a little while, Izuku decided to hang out with John and Ren, as they were getting ready to head out, when they saw Mineta literally fly past them and crash into the ground, before seeing an extremely pissed off Nora, causing Ren to jump into John's arms. Next time I catch you trying to perv, I'll break your kneecaps, Nora snapped to the grate before she saw Izuku, John and Ren. Oh, hey guys. Nora said completely nonchalantly, like nothing happened as the three just nodded at her before immediately booking towards the city. I swear, just when I think Nora can't get any more scary. Izuku said while still in shock. What are you complaining about man, you're not sharing a room with her. John said as Izuku just chuckled and shaked his head. That guy just can't stop digging his own grave, can he? Ren asked as Izuku just shaked his head. No, he can't. Worst part is, he's actually pretty chill when a girl isn't in the mix. Oh, that's just great. He could be a decent guy, but either doesn't want to resist his urges or just have a very hard time doing so. John said as his phone started getting blown up with messages from his sisters and mother. Holy hell, already? It's barely been half an hour, and Saf told them already. John said while in absolute shock as Izuku looked over his shoulder. Hey, look on the bright side John. Least it won't be like when you first introduced Pura to your family. Hopefully. Izuku, that's not very reassuring. John said deadpan, while Izuku just shrugged his shoulders, making John roll his eyes while Ren looked up and swore he saw a raven with red eyes as he narrowed his eyes. Ren? Yo, Ren. Izuku said which got Ren to snap out of his trance as he looked at Izuku and John. You alright Ren? You were staring off into space or something like that. John said as Ren shook his head as he looked to where he saw the raven, which was no gone. Yeah, I'm fine. Just thought I saw something for a minute. Ren said as the three boys continued walking. It's going to be a mess when Eerie meets my family. John said as he held his head down while Izuku patted him on the back. I think you're overreacting John. Besides, can't you just not do it? Ren asked as Izuku and John just looked at him. Ren, Izuku's basically part of my family, so him taking Eerie to meet my family is essentially obligated. And I am not overreacting, you have no idea what my other sisters and mother are capable of. John said while shaking Ren like a mad lad. John's not being hyperbolic. Saffron is the only one of John's sisters who's on the tame side. Izuku explained to Ren while slightly shivering. I still remember the time when we were eight and they spent five hours dressing us up on really ridiculous and dumb outfits. John said while cringing at the memory. And a massive piece of advice. Never, and I mean never piss off John's mother. That woman is extremely fucking horrifying and can put the fear of God into anyone. Izuku said to Ren while he and John were both slightly shaking just at the thought of the rage of John's mother, before Izuku spotted someone he didn't want to see at all. Oh crap, move guys. Izuku said as John immediately knew what Izuku was on about while Ren was confused, as he did get a look at the person when they were a good while away. Is that, Bakugo's mother? Ren asked as Izuku and John both nodded their heads yes, answering Ren's question before they heard a massive commotion a little ways away. A little while later, back at the dorms. Natsu was in the middle of telling Eerie a story about Izuku and Yang. Bowie, then what happened Uncle Natsu? Eerie asked with a lot of excitement in her voice. Izuku and Yang looked the grim right in its eyes, before they pulled off a little move I like to call the double blinding fire punch, and absolutely punched its head clean off, sending it flying a good few miles away. Natsu said while Eerie was absolutely enjoying what she was hearing. Papa and Mama are really strong. Eerie said as Natsu smiled and gave the little bean head pats. You have no idea, little snow bean. Natsu said as Eerie giggled while Urza and Pura were watching. Here I thought I'd never see Natsu take something seriously for once. Urza said while Pura just laughed. You need to give Natsu more credit than that, sis. I'll start that if and when he and Grey stop fighting and arguing every half a minute. Touché. 
Pura said while giggling as Urza just smiled and put her arm around Pura's shoulder. So, have you picked out any names for when you and John have children? Urza asked with a slight smirk on her face, while Pura was blushing brighter than her hair. I. 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 DTFF, I'm just kidding Pura. Urza said while giggling as Pura caught her breath right when Eri ran to them. Auntie Pura, Mama Urza, Papa, Uncle John and Uncle Ren Ren are on TV. Eri said as Pura and Urza were curious about what Eri was talking about as they followed Eri to the TV along with the others and did see Izuku, John and Ren on there due to the three stopping a sudden grim attack. But Urza and Pura couldn't help but laugh over how uncomfortable and embarrassed the three looked and Iida was going off on how they were being reckless and breaking the law only for Shoto to knock him out cold. Hypocrite. Shoto said as he sat down beside Natsu. How are you able to put up with that guy? Natsu asked, only for Shoto to shrug his shoulders. Tune him out. Shoto said as Natsu nodded his head while Pura and Urza were also very concerned about Grim being in the city. Yang was sleeping as she found her being woken up by Izuku and Yuri, both smiling brightly. Morning, my love. Izuku said as Yuri jumped into Yang's arms and gave her a massive hug. Mama. Yuri said while hugging Yang as she smiles and hugged her little snowball back. You're becoming a big girl Yuri, and I don't like it. Yang said with comically cry, making Izuku chuckled and kiss her forehead. Don't worry mama, I'll always be your adorable little snowbean. Eerie said when they heard sounds of little feet running towards them. Incoming. Izuku said as a little girl who looked exactly like Yang, but with Izuku's hair color and eyes ran into the room as Izuku opened his arms for a hug. How's my adorable little firecracker? Izuku asked as he gave her head pats. Awesome papa. The little green haired girl said before jumping onto Yang and hugged her and Eerie. Mommy, big sis. Eri quickly hugged her younger green-haired sister with a massive smile on her face, leading to Yang Bear hugging her baby girls. My beautiful little angels. Yang said while shedding tears of joy as her green-haired daughter wiped her tears away. Don't be sad mommy. I'm not sad sweetie, I'm just really happy I have such adorable little angels for daughters. Yang said as she closed her eyes, only for her to wake up from her nap, having been dreaming. Oh damn, not again. Why must my mind play with my feelings? Yang complained to herself as she has been that dream of her and Izuku's future family semi-regularly, which got on her nerves due, since she really wanted it to be reality. Yang then looked at the bedside table as she saw Momo's picture of her, and Izuku was now fixed, which made her smile as she saw a memento from one of her and Izuku's dates, picking it up while smiling. Ah, that was a lovely date. Yang said to herself when she saw one of the drawers were open, as her curiosity got the better of her, as she looked inside and found Izuku's personal journal. Since when did Izuku have his own journal? I mean sure, he has a lot of journals on people's powers, but I never thought he'd have a personal journal. Yang thought to herself before getting more curious about what Izuku wrote in his journal, and was very tempted to read it, but she stopped herself. No, 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 bad Yang. That's Izuku's private journal, I can't just snoop through it just because I'm his girlfriend. Then again, not like Izuku would know I took a peek. Yang said to herself before shaking her head before putting Izuku's journal away. Nope, I'm not pinky. I actually respect people's boundaries, I'll just ask Izuku if I can read it when he gets back. Yang said as she walked to the common area and saw Eri, Ruby and Weiss in a mini battle against Pura and Nora. Mama Ruby, Mama Weiss, unleash our fury on the enemy. Eri said as Ruby jumped up from their makeshift fortress and threw a pillow at Pura and Nora's fortress, causing it to break open. Ma'am, we've been breached. Nora said in shock as Pura retaliated by throwing a pillow of her own at Ruby, only for Yang to jump in, lock the pillow, and threw two pillows at full strength at Pura and Nora, knocking them over. Boom, flawless victory. Yang said as Yuri jumped into Yang's arms and hugged her. Hehehe, <laughs> mama to the rescue. Yuri said while smiling as Yang smiled and laughed back. You're welcome, my little snowball. Yang said while giving Yuri headpats along with Ruby, making the two both smile. Thanks, sis. Ruby said as they all turned to see Blake taking a nap and wonder if she was in the middle of dreaming, which she was. Blake's dream involved her running away from her insane former mentor Adam Taurus, who was going out of his way to kill any humans who got in his way, and she was quickly cornered. Give it up Blake, you have nowhere left to run. Adam said as Blake tried to grab her weapon, only for Adam to disarm her, but then he found himself getting decked right in the face. Adam stumbled backwards in a daze as his vision quickly returned as he saw Izuku and Yang standing in front of Blake. Get the hell away from her. Izuku and Yang both said in unison as Adam and Izuku's blades clashed. Get out of my way, human. Adam snapped at Izuku, but Izuku wasn't phased in the slightest as he overpowered Adam. Make me. 
Izuku said as he pushed Adam back while Yang rushed towards him as Adam tried to slash Yang's arm, but Yang moved too fast and bashed her fist into his gut. Adam dropped his sword as he held his chest in pain before getting kicked across the head by Yang, which sent him flying while she grabbed his sword. Give it up Adam, it's over. Izuku yelled as Adam glared at Yang and charged towards her with a hidden knife he was holding, only for Izuku to run towards him as Adam tried to slash Yang, only to fail as she threw the chest with his blade while Izuku stabbed him through the back with his sword. Lake quickly woke up from her dream in a slight fright, feeling highly conflicted about the dream she just had. Sure, she 100% did not agree with Adam's extremist ideals, but she also didn't want him dead. Meanwhile, Izuku, John and Ren were waiting for all the sudden attention they got to die down as they were walking around while keeping their cool, while Ren occasionally took some glances into the sky, which Izuku and John both noticed. I still can't believe we got that much attention just by being good people and doing the right thing. Ren said, not being really used to receiving a lot of attention. Hey, you should have seen UA when it was learned dad would be teaching there. There were a lot of reporters wanting to talk to him. Enough to make our little audience look tame. Izuku said while Ren was just in shock. Never underestimate reporters man. John said when Izuku unintentionally bumped into someone. Crap biscuits, sorry about that. Wasn't paying attention. No, no, it's on me. The woman said as the three boys got a good look at her. Izuku felt something was slight off about her as she took a look at Izuku as her eyes widened. You, you're the boy who won the sports festival, right? The woman asked as Izuku just nodded his head. Yeah, that'd be me, miss. Cinderfall. She said introducing herself as she and Izuku shook hands. Oh yeah, we remember watching the sports festival at Beacon, Yang was cheering non-stop for you. To the point she started wearing a cheerleader outfit. John said while Ren chuckled a bit and Izuku was slightly blushing. Yang is a cheerleader, oh my. Izuku thought to himself before getting his mind back on the right track. Anyways, take care of yourself miss. Izuku said as he, John and Ren walked off while he and Cinder locked eyes for an extremely brief moment, further adding to Izuku's uneasiness around her. They walked off and once they were far enough away from Cinder, they looked at each other. I'm not the only one who saw red flags with that woman, right? Izuku asked as John nodded his head when they saw Ren looking off into the sky again. Ren, are you sure you're alright? You've been staring off into the sky countless times for the past few minutes. John said to Ren as he looked at him and Izuku. Izuku, a red-eyed raven wouldn't happen to mean anything to you and John, would it? Ren asked which confused John while Izuku's eyes widened. Ren, you said the raven you say had red eyes. Izuku asked to which Ren nodded his head in response. I saw the same raven earlier when I was out with Yang and Blake. Izuku said before he put the pieces together in his mind. Oh damn it, it has to be Yang's birth mother raven. Izuku said with some frustration in his voice while Ren and John were confused. Their mom can turn into a bird. How? John asked, completely dumbfounded as Izuku just shrugged his shoulders. No idea, all I know is that her and Crow can turn into birds. But, didn't she walk out of Yang's life when she was just a baby? Ren asked as Izuku and John both nodded their heads. Then what on earth does she want then? Honestly Ren, I couldn't tell you what it is she wants. She's a bit of a rough spot of discussion for a reason. Well, what about Yang? You going to tell her about this? John asked as Izuku turned around and rubbed the back of his head. Honestly, I don't know. Sure, Yang could use the closure. But then again, Yang is basically a grown woman now, and she's gotten this far with her being involved besides, I won't know how Yang will take it. But, I just really don't like keeping things anything from Yang. Izuku said as he sighed, not knowing how to go about this. Let's just put that on the back burner for now, I doubt whatever she wants has anything to do with Yang, so no reason in telling her. John suggests as Izuku decided to go along with his idea. Meanwhile, Cinder was smirking to herself, thinking she already had Izuku figured out. This will be too easy, all I'll have to do is play to his heroic nature, and then that seal he and his pink-haired friend placed will be destroyed. Back at the dorms, Yang was in the middle of teaching Eerie self-defense. Good job Snowball, you're doing a good job getting the hang of it. Yang said with a supportive smile on her face. Yay, thanks mama. Eerie said as she hugged Yang. Now remember this last thing, if anyone is acting uncomfortable around you, always go below the belt. Yang said as Yuri nodded her head with a little smile. That's my girl. Yang said as she picked up Yuri into her arms. You'll make a great big sister, I know it Yuri. Hearing that made Yuri smile as she hugged her mama. Have you and papa picked out any names for when you have more kids? Yuri asked as she innocently tilted her head as Yang nodded. I actually have a perfect name for if we have a girl, Yin. Yang said as Yuri's eyes widened with joy. That's a great name, mama. 
Eerie said with a hug smile as she yawned and fell asleep in Yang's arms, making her smile at the side as she sat on her bed when she heard Momo and Blake coming towards the room. You're kidding Blake. I'm not, Yang can definitely pull it off. Blake said as she and Momo opened the door and headed in. What can I pull off? Yang asked, wondering what Momo and Blake were talking about. Blake said you could beat Mirko in a fight. Momo said, answering Yang's question. Oh. Yeah, I could pull that off. Yang said, completely nonchalantly as Blake had a little told you so look on her face, while Momo was dumbfounded. Eba, she's one of the top ranked heroes for a reason. You have any idea how strong her kicks are? Momo, I've dealt with and have been hit by way worse while out on guild escapades. And the key to beating Mirko is to keeping your distance, stay on the move, and giving her no room to react, that, and you could also use her lust for battle against her. Besides, me, Izuku, John, Pura, Urza and Atsu could beat her with ease, since she's beyond insistent on thinking teamwork is a load of crap. Yang explained to Momo while Blake nodded her head in agreement. And that's not taking my semblance into consideration. If she did manage to hit me, she'd just be making me stronger, since my semblance would absorb the kinetic energy from her attack. So, it's basically like a watered-down version of Vegeta's ultra-ego form. Momo said while Yang and Blake were both shocked Momo knows what Dragon Ball is. What, I read manga. Momo said while pouting. Didn't take you for a manga gal. Though, we didn't think Blake would be so into smut so anything is possible. Yang said as Blake's face quickly lit up. Yang, don't say that out loud. Blake said while blushing as Momo patted her on the back. A little while later, Izuku, John and Ren returned to the dorms when they saw Eerie with John's sword and shield chasing Mineta. Get back here creepy grape. You'll feel the wrath of the snowball knight. Eerie said while Mineta was screaming at the top of his lungs, as John, Izuku and Ren was laughing their asses off. Ha 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 ha. This is golden. John said in between his laughter as Ren fell over laughing, while Izuku saw Nora and Yang were recording it. What's going on here? Izuku asked in between his laughter as Mineta tried climbing onto the couch to get away from Eerie. That disgusting grape insulted Jiro's looks, so Eerie grabbed John's weapons and started chasing him. Weiss explained to Izuku as John helped Ren back onto his feet. And he wonders why girls won't give him the time of day. Izuku said as Mineta ran into someone, which happened to be Urza as she kicked him so hard, he fell unconscious before picking up Eerie. Good job, my little snow knight. Urza said while smiling as John walked over to Eerie, prompting Eerie to give him his weapons back. The job standing up for Jiro, Eerie. John said while ruffling Eerie's hair. Thanks Uncle John, me and Mama Ruby made sure to make the nice rocker lady feel better before I chaz the mean grape. Eerie said as Izuku walked over to them and hugged her and Urza. That's my little angel. Izuku said with a smile as he and Urza sat down while she had Eerie on her lap, while Ruby came down and sat on Izuku's lap. Hey Ruby. Izuku said as he kissed Ruby on the cheek, which made her smile. So, how was your hangout with John and Ren? Ruby asked as she hugged her green-haired boyfriend. Well, aside from that random grim attack, it was pretty normal. Though I bumped into a woman named Cinderfall. Izuku explained to Ruby. Huh, that's a name. Ruby said whole running her hand through his hair. Yeah, and I felt uneasy around her for some reason. Call me paranoid all you want, but something about her doesn't sit right with me. Izuku said as Weiss also joined Ruby in sitting on Izuku's lap. Well, you're not one to be paranoid over nothing, so it must be warranted. Wai said as she stroked Izuku's cheek. I hope I'm just overreacting, but I get the feeling I'm not. Izuku said as he looked out the window, still feeling the same uneasiness he had around Cinder, knowing something was up with the woman. Dust whoever you are Cinderfall, I have a strong feeling it's not anything pretty. Izuku, John and Ren were trying to relax, only for Mina to get in the way of that, going on about how she thinks Yang and the others aren't good enough for him, making Izuku, John and Ren roll their eyes. You've got some nerve to think you know a damn thing about my girlfriends. Izuku said as he got up into Mina's face. I know enough to know they're not good enough for you. Mina said as Izuku's eyes started glowing, very subtlety. Like what? Name one thing about any of them, like Yang's favorite color, Weiss's preferred drink, Urza's favorite desert or Blake's favorite hobby. Hell, name Ruby's birthday. Izuku said, bordering on screaming at Mina as Ren and John face planned. Oh boy, this will take a while. Ren said while rolling his eyes as some of the others started coming into the common area, which made Izuku smirk before clearing his throat. You and Mineta tried doing what last night Izuku shouted, making Mina confused as the others looked over at them, with John and Ren wondering what Izuku was doing. Was invading my privacy not enough for you? You and Mineta just had to spy on me, Blake and Yang last night, hoping you'd catch us doing the devil's tango, Izuku shouted as Mina was about to say Izuku was lying, only for her to get an onslaught of disapproval which then led to Mina walking away. 
Then they heard Ruby and Weiss screaming as they ran to Izuku, covered in blankets. Ruby, Weiss, what happened? Izuku said, extremely concerned to why Ruby and Weiss screamed while Weiss was covering her chest. Some bastards stole our clothes. Weiss yelled right when Mineta walked into the common, sniffing Ruby's panties. I'm going to kill him. Ruby said as she grabbed Crescent Rose and pointed it at Mineta. Mineta dropped Ruby's underwear as he ran off like the coward he is, leading to Ruby chasing him while also grabbing her underwear along the way. Knowing that pest, he probably hid our clothes in his room. Y said while sighing as Izuku handed her a pair of gloves. Y smiled as she grabbed the gloves from Izuku and kissed him on the cheek before leaving to regain her and Ruby's clothes. How the hell has that guy not gotten expelled yet? John asked in complete disbelief as Izuku just shrugged his shoulders. Wish I could tell you the answer John. Apparently all the punishments from Principal Nezu weren't enough to get Mineta to knock it off. Izuku said as they saw Ruby beating the crap out of Mineta with her bare hands. Oh damn. Ren said in shock as he and John both were slightly shaking out of fear of seeing Ruby being pissed off. Best this is a good indication to never piss off Ruby. John said as Yang walked into the room, still in her pajamas as she saw Ruby beating Mineta. Yikes, the hell did the grape do to piss off Ruby? Yang asked, while feeling a slight chill seeing her sister being genuinely mad. Well, Ashido was running her mouth about you and the other girls, so I might have shut her up by saying she and Mineta spied on me, you and Blake last night, hoping to catch us in the act, then Mineta for whatever reason walked in while smelling Ruby's underwear, which led to what she's doing now, and Weiss is off getting her and Ruby's clothes back. Izuku explained as Yang sighed and rolled her eyes as she walked over to Mineta and stomped on his nuts. Try anything, and I mean anything on my baby sister again, I wouldn't be merciful. Got it Yang yelled as Mineta nodded his head while in pain as he limped away, before Yang found herself being hugged by Ruby. Do you want to go on a date Ruby? Is, hope you don't mind Eerie coming with us Izuku. Ruby said while Eerie giggled before Izuku lifted her onto his shoulders. Not at all Ruby. Let's go. Izuku said as he and Ruby held hands and left for their date, while Eerie was pointing towards with a smile on her face. Look at those adorable cinnamon rolls. Yang said with a smile and also took a picture of the three. They could light up a whole city just by smiling. Ren said, getting a chuckle out of John when they saw Kitsumi walk into the room, and they all expected her to yell at them. Yang, John, Ren. Was all Kitsumi said as the three of them had their eyes widen in shock, given she didn't yell at them. H hey, Bakugo. Yang said while John and Ren both did a double take, not knowing if they were dreaming or not. Suu, congrats on you allowing Yagi to have a harem. Kitsumi said to Yang. Uh. Thanks. Yang said in response, having no idea what's going on and why Kitsumi isn't acting like she's going through her period. I have so many questions right now, who is that and what happened to Kitsumi Bakugo? Yang wondered to herself when they overheard Natsu and Iida arguing. Oh my god, get off my freaking back four eyes, I'm not doing anything wrong. Natsu said to Iida while rolling his eyes in annoyance as John and Ren just face planned. You are, you damn scoundrel. Your acts of indecent exposure is being a detriment to all the female students here. Eid yelled at Natsu which made his jaw drop. Indecent expos. I'm just showing off my abs, you're acting like I'm streaking or something like that. There's nothing wrong with showing off a bit off skin. Natsu said back to Eid as he started doing his hand spasms again. Besides, girls getting distracted is more of a them problem than a me problem if you think about it. Natsu said as Eid got pissed off at Natsu for not compiling with his view of the rules. You will listen to me, you pink-haired ruffian. I am order and law. Iida yelled at Natsu, who still wasn't phased. Yeah, yeah, and I'm the successor to Spider-Man. John said as Iida got more pissed, right as Yang got into his face. Alright pal, I've had it up to here with your bullshit attitude. You've done nothing but try to boss all of us around because you're so delusional to believe everything you say is law. Newsflash asshole, Izuku's the class rep and not you, thank god since you'd make everyone absolutely miserable. Yang yelled at Iida, making him back up out of fear as he tried to talk back to her, only for him not being able to think of the words. So, you better start rethinking your attitude or so help me god, I will go all night full bane on your ass and break your spine, so you can truly be like your older brother. Got it Yang snapped at Iida as her eyes turned red for a moment, making Iida shut up completely and leave the room as Yang calmed down, with her eyes turning back to their normal color. Hopefully he'll wise up and chill the hell out. Yang said before sitting down with Ren and John with Izuku. Izuku and Ruby were having fun on their date, while Liri was just happy her mama and papa were happy, while the three cinnamon rolls were having ice cream. MMMMMMM, I really love cookies and cream. Ruby said while a smile as Izuku kissed her cheek, making her giggle as Iri was enjoying her ice cream and was sitting on Ruby's lap. 
Eerie was swinging her legs back and forth as people passing by the cinnamon rolls and couldn't help but coo at how adorable they looked, mostly the women who passed them by. Huh, it's funny that Eerie's hair and eyes are the opposite color of me and mom. Ruby said as Izuku chuckled at her observation. Yeah, it kinda is. Izuku said as they finished their ice cream and started walking around. You're really cool and awesome Mama Ruby. Eerie said with a big smile on her face as Ruby smiled and ruffled her hair. Thanks sweetie, it really means a lot to me. Ruby said as Izuku held her hand, making the two smile. You really are Summer's daughter. Izuku said, making Ruby feel proud of that fact as she went in to kiss Izuku, while covering Eerie's eyes as little joke. Meanwhile. Tashinori and Inko were spending time with Tai and Summer, enjoying themselves when Tashinori felt his phone vibrated and pulled it out, which immediately killed his enjoyment. Oh great. Tashinori mumbled as he put his phone away, though the change in his expression didn't go unnoticed. Ashi, something wrong bud? Tai asked, wondering if something bad happened. Ugh, it was night eye. Tashinori said as Tai and Summer were confused while Linko immediately knew what the issue is. Your old sidekick. I thought you two were on decent terms. Tai said as Tashinori just shook his head. We were, until Linko and I learned how he treated Izuku during his work study, and he had the nerve to say John wasn't worthy, and Mirio was the perfect candidate to take it. Tashinori explained to Tai and Summer, trying to keep his cool. But, it's not his quirk. He shouldn't have a say in who you give one for all to. Summer said, completely having a hard time understanding Night Eye's logic. What do you mean by how he treated Izuku? Tai asked, genuinely confused by Tashinori's statement. Izuku told us that Night Eye undermined him the moment they meet, because he said Izuku couldn't be the next me, something I specifically told Izuku not to do. Though the real kicker was when Izuku and Mirio ran into Eerie who was with Overhaul, which Mirio thought it was a good idea to leave the clearly traumatized child with the crime boss. Tashinori explained as Tai and Summer's jaws dropped out of sheer disbelief. Though Izuku did the reasonable thing and got Eerie far away from him, which made Night Eye chew Izuku out. Yes, he gave Izuku hell for doing the right thing, which led to Izuku calling it quits and went to finish his work study with me and Inko. Tashinori finished explaining as Summer was on the urge of slapping a hoe. Tai, remind me to have a little talk with him if we ever see him. Summer said while sporting a dark looking in her silver eyes, getting Tai to slightly shiver a bit. But Izuku. Izuku, Ruby and Iri made it back to the dorms, while Liri was asleep in Ruby's arms, as they opened the doors. Hey guys, we're back and... What are you guys doing? Izuku asked as he and Ruby saw Shoto and Natsu with bacon on them, using their flames to cook them. We were in the mood for some bacon. Kirishima said as he grabbed plates for everyone. And you couldn't bother to use the stove like normal people. Izuku asked while Ruby was completely dumbfounded by what she was seeing. Hey, I've done this with my oldest brother a lot of times. Shoto said to Izuku and Ruby, completely surprising the two of them. Huh, the more you know. I honestly thought this was Natsu's idea. Izuku said while chuckling as he and Ruby sat down with the others and had some bacon right when Yang walked towards them and saw the outfit she was wearing. Whoa, looking good Yang. Izuku said, making Yang smile as she kissed Izuku. Thanks Izuku. Don't know why I don't wear this more often, I look good in it. Yang said as she sat down beside Izuku and helped herself to some bacon as they enjoyed the food. Lake was sitting on her bed while looking over her notes when she noticed Eerie walk into the room, sporting cat ears on her head. Look mama Blake, I look just like you. Eerie said with a big all smile as Blake was speechless, before pulling Eerie into a hug. You look so adorable Eerie Blake squealed with joy as she held her snowball daughter in her arms, while Eerie was giggling at the affection she was getting from her frontis mama. I love you mama Blake. Eerie said, which made Blake smile as Eerie handed her a picture she made, leaving Blake speechless. Eerie? I love it. Blake said as she hugged the snowball more, giving Eerie more joy and smiled even more. I knew you would love it mama Blake. Eerie said while smiling as Blake gave the little snowbean lots of head pats. You're so thoughtful Eerie. Blake said as she and Eerie started cuddling. Appa taught me to always be nice and honest, except to really, really mean people. Eerie said as she rested her little head against Blake. Meanwhile. Yang and Momo were outside of Mineta's room as they were rigging up two buckets, filled to the brim with ice cold water and confetti. Hehehe, <laughs> this will teach the grape not to mess with my little sis. Yang said with an evil smirk as she and Momo finished rigging up the buckets. You sure this will work Yang? Momo asked, not knowing if it would work or not. Oh, it will work, trust me Momo. Yang said with reassurance as she pulled out her phone. John, almost in position. Yeah, almost. John said as he was climbing up to Mineta's room on the outside, before reaching his window and climbed inside the grapes room, and it was exactly what John was expecting. I'm not sure what pathetic and creepy smells like, but this is it. 
John said to himself as he pulled out a trash bag and grabbed all of Minetta's clothes before throwing them into the bag. However, to be more evil, John grabbed all of Minetta's dirty mags as well and chucked them into the bag before heading to the window and climbed down. Yang and Momo then knocked on Minetta's door very loudly and ran off as fast as they could right before Minetta opened the door and immediately gotten drenched in ice cold water and confetti and immediately saw he had no clothes to change into. Meanwhile, Izuku was doing some sparing with Urza as they clashed their swords together, having a little back and forth before Izuku was able to overpower Urza and used his water abilities to maneuver around Urza. Catch me if you can Urza. Izuku said with a cheeky and playful tone in his voice as Urza just smiled and chuckled and leaped after him. Izuku and Urza kept on clashing their blades while Izuku kept on moving around to trip her up, however Urza managed to think fast and cut off Izuku's path and kissed him, which definitely surprised him. Urza then tripped up Izuku and threw him over her shoulder before pinning him on the ground, but she couldn't help to kiss him again, though this time Izuku kissed her back. He, you win Urza. Did Yang give you that idea? Izuku asked Urza as she helped him back up while blushing. Well, I. Uh. A bit. Urza admitted as Izuku chuckled and hugged Urza. No need to be embarrassed Urza. Izuku said as he held Urza's hand as they headed inside and saw John placing Mineta's dirty mags all over the place. Dude, what are you doing? Izuku asked while chuckling at what John was doing. Yang thought it'd be funny to get back at Mineta for the stunt he pulled with Ruby and Weiss. John explained before he finished laying out Mineta's magazines, as Izuku looked inside the trash bag and saw all of Mineta's clothes and started laughing. Hahaha. <laughs> oh, this is golden. Izuku said as Urza couldn't help but crack up a bit, right when Yang and Momo ran into the common area. Hahaha. <laughs> That's what happens when you mess with Team Rubai. Yang exclaimed as she and Momo high-fived. Nice work Yang, this should teach Mineta a well-deserved lesson. Izuku said as he gave Yang a hug and a kiss. Where are Ruby and Weiss anyway? John asked as Izuku hugged and kissed Momo. Oh, I think they're out with Yuraka and Shoto. Izuku explained as John just nodded. Meanwhile. Weiss was in the middle of a shopping spree, looking for stuff to buy for Eerie, while Ruby, Shoto and Achako were just watching her. Oh Weiss, I think that's enough stuff for Eerie. Ruby said, in shock of seeing all the things Weiss was getting for Eerie. Nonsense Ruby, this is far from enough for our little snowbean. Why said as Achako fell over backwards. Weiss, all that stuff might cause Yuri to become spoiled. Shoto said as Weiss just laughed at that idea. Oh please Todoroki, Yuri has no room to become spoiled in that adorable little heart of hers. Why said as Shoto helped Achako back up while Ruby rolled her eyes. Weiss, think about it like this, Yuri wouldn't want all this stuff for no reason. Ruby explained to Weiss, who took a moment to think about Ruby's words. Well, when you say it like that, that does make sense. Weiss said, agreeing with Ruby as she felt a bit bad for going overboard. Don't be sad Weiss, you can use some of the things you bought for Eerie's birthday or Christmas. Ruby suggested which immediately cheered up Weiss. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks Ruby. Weiss said as she hugged Ruby before deciding which to save for Eerie's birthday and or Christmas. Back at the dorms. Yang and Momo's prank went off smoothly as the class started going off on Mineta for being more of a degenerate than they all thought. And given Mineta's personality, it seemed more believable while Mineta was getting made fun of for getting soaked and covered with confetti, while Kirishima picked up all of Mineta's magazines, resisting the urge to throw up and drop them all in the grape's hands. During that, Ren grabbed the bag full of Mineta's clothes and took it back to Mineta's room when no one was looking, while cracking up at Yang's plan. But to give it to Yang, she knows how to make a good prank. Ren thought to himself as he made it back to the common area, seeing Mineta fuming as he stormed off, much to the amusement of Yang and the others. Turnabout is fair play, grape. Yang quipped as she and Urza fist bumped before they saw Blake walk into the room while carrying Eerie in her arms. Eyes, look how cute Eerie is. Blake said as she held Eerie in front of her, letting the others see the cat ears the snowball was wearing. Oh, you look so cute Eerie. Yang said as Urza gave her head pats, making the little snowball smile. Haha, <laughs> thanks mama. Iri said as she and Blake sat down, right when Ruby, Weiss, Shoto and Achako returned to the dorms. Hey guys, we're back. And hey, little snowball. Weiss said as Iri ran over to Weiss and hugged her. Mama Weiss look, I look like Mama Blake. Iri said with joy, making Weiss smile as she picked Iri up and hugged her. You look really cute sweetie. Weiss said as she kissed Iri on the forehead. Mom and Winter would absolutely love Iri. Weiss thought to herself as Eerie then hugged Ruby, before Weiss gave Eerie some of the things she bought, which Eerie absolutely loved, and quickly thanked Weiss. That definitely made the era smile as Izuku kissed Weiss on the cheek, making them both smile. Eerie's definitely melted your heart Weiss. Izuku said with a chuckle as Weiss blushed and looked away. 
you already did that Izuku. Y submitted as Izuku held her hand, before she looked back at him and rested her forehead against his, smiling knowing she's with a boy who truly loves her for who she is. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.